Welcome to Treasure Coast Community Health. With seven locations to serve you better. We have a dedicated staff. And now, here's your host, CEO Vicki Sule. And welcome to Community Conversations. This is Vicki Sule, your host and the CEO of Treasure Coast Community Health, where our tagline is healthcare for all because we know that there are barriers to health care that many of the individuals across the country run into, whether it is translation services or um, barriers to transportation or insurance. That's a big one. And so we have worked diligently over the last 26 years to remove those barriers, but there's always something new coming up. And so we encourage our patients to ask good questions about how we might be able to help not just them, but individuals who are facing those barriers and are not really sure how to get over them. And this radio show actually is a byproduct of that, reaching out to different places that individuals might not come across um, or might not think they need until they do need it. And so this morning is one of those opportunities. Um, my guest today is Mindy Fetterman from the Inner Truth Project, and she is running an organization that is very unique. Um, instead of being the executive director or CEO, she actually titled herself as Mindy. Executive Truth Seeker. Truth Seeker. Now, you don't see many um, executive leadership saying that they're truth seekers, although we all try to do that. Right. So tell me a little bit about your organization and how you came up to this unique titling. I definitely will. And thank you for having me. And uh, just listening to you, uh, when you just mentioned insurance, I just wanted to tell you, uh, we had an outing this past weekend with some of our survivors. And uh, we were, were using these heavy balls that we were instructed to throw on the ground with, with all of the anger that we had and to envision whatever we had that made us so angry. And we, we were thinking about insurance and throwing <laughs> insurance on the ground. So when you said that, that's immediately what I thought of because so many people have um, barriers. They're either uninsured or um, very, um, very far removed from getting any type of insurance. And that includes people with mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So the Inner Truth Project is really a specific niche for people with mental health issues, uh -huh. but more specifically, people who've experienced sexual trauma. And okay. a lot of people um, don't realize that the effects of sexual trauma can lead to post-traumatic stress disorder, uh, complex uh, post-traumatic stress Absolutely. disorder, anxiety, depression, uh, substance abuse disorders and self-injury, eating disorders, all sorts of things that many people in the community are dealing with mm -hmm. and many um, agencies are helping with, but not really talking about the underlying issue, which is rape, incest, sexual abuse, sex trafficking, because it's a really horrible thing and people don't want to talk about it. Exactly. So that's where we come in. And, and that's why I like to think of myself as a truth seeker. Because I, I always want to get right to the bottom, right to the issue, and, and not be afraid to talk about the things that nobody else wants to talk about. Well, it's a very valid point because from most healthcare providers' perspective, I would think that it's not just uncomfortable for them personally because it is a nasty event in a person's life, but they feel like they are subsequently perhaps causing more damage to that individual by bringing it up. Similar to when someone passes, there's a reluctance um, to ask the spouse um, that is still left on this earth, you know, how are you doing? Do you miss John? Because they think they're inflicting more pain when actually the pain is in not having John remembered because that spouse still thinks of that individual yeah. all the time. You know what, that, that's an interesting um, perspective. And, and what I find is you're 100% right. And most people want someone else to ask the question. They're 
they're thinking that they can't talk about it. They ah. can't talk about their spouse that's passed away. They uh-huh. can't talk about their trauma because it's going to make everyone else, else uncomfortable. uncomfortable. However, they're just waiting for someone to ask the question so that they know it's okay to talk about it. There's no shame. There's nothing wrong with you. You can have all of the feelings because you're human. And that's Mm -hmm. why we have the range of emotions that we have. We have to create a society where healthcare providers, where family members, where educators know that we can talk about this. It doesn't have to be secretive. It doesn't have to be in the dark. And when we're allowed to talk about it, then people are allowed to heal. So people don't ask the question, but we're all waiting for the topic to come up. And and of course, as I advise all of my um, post high school hires, you know, that doesn't mean that in a room full of 30, you would bring this up in front of everyone. There's a time and a place for everyone. (laughs) And that seems so logical when you say it out loud, like, yeah, duh. Right. Um, But sometimes, uh, you know, we all love the middle as we pass from one extreme of not saying anything to the other extreme of, you know, blurting, perhaps. And so um, a point very well taken. So tell me how you got into um, recognizing this inner truth uh, journey. Um, and uh, tell us a little bit more about the organization, because we both just kind of flew into this right, discussion. Right, See, that's what I do. I go right, I go right to the heart of it. And, um, you know, I'm happy to share. I love to share about why I do this. This is, a, this is my passion. Um, I myself am a survivor. I was molested when I was very young um, for several years, and then I was drugged and I was gang raped when I was oh 16. God. Um, and then I was assaulted again when I was 23. I'm sorry. Um, well, I no appreciate that. No one should have that. to go through that, I guess, is what I'm thinking. Well, here's what I found out, and I appreciate that, but um, I, I never really got the appropriate help that I needed, and I started down this um, road of, of drug abuse and mm-hmm. alcoholism. and Because you want to forget. Um, I'm sorry? Because you want to forget. Of course. You of want to course. For, well, you, you don't want to deal with the, the pain. Of course, we mm-hmm. start to self-medicate. Mm-hmm. And um, it wasn't really until I was an adult that I got the appropriate care that I needed. And um, I, I really started to understand that my whole life where I felt like I was garbage and I was useless and everything was my fault, that I really began to understand that I wasn't a victim that I had more power than I believed. And it was in my initial recovery that I started to share what had happened to me with other Mm -hmm. people. And when I did, I found out that other people had gone through exactly what I had gone through. And I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I'd seen the, I always talk about this. I'd seen the after school specials and I'd read the books, you know, and I (laughs) I read V.C. Andrews and all that stuff. I didn't know that this was real. And every single time I told my story, Every time somebody would say, you just told my story. And for whatever reason, I had um, a very easy time talking about it. And I just realized, okay, there's there's something here. We need to get more and more people to start talking. And then as I talked more and more people talked, I realized, all right, I'm getting all these people to kind of like rip these Band-Aids off. But now what? Exactly. There were no services. There were there were no places to go where we could feel safe Mm -hmm. and be with other survivors, where we could um, get appropriate services, where we could learn, you know, the steps to healing, not just get Mm -hmm. therapy, but really learn how to um, live our our fullest lives. And so from that, from my own personal experiences, the Inner Truth Project was born. That that's an amazing story, and I have to give you kudos for being such a brave woman. Thank you. Um, because there is that stigma, and there is that reluctance to share something so personal. So thank you for doing that on behalf of women around all of our counties here. Um, Tell me, how long have you been doing this then, the Inner Truth Project? I I don't want to say it's the best kept secret, but... <laughs> um, I, Well, um, you know, I've been working with survivors and sharing my story almost for two decades now. And um, the Inner Truth Project, we've had our space since 2012. And uh, it feels like it feels like a lifetime, really, because the work is so intense. But it's such an honor to be able to um, be there when somebody decides to take that first step and, Mm -hmm. and share their story, because so many people Um, You know, they live a lifetime with this. And I think, you know, as I was just explaining what happened to me, Mm -hmm. maybe somebody is thinking as they're listening about somebody they know or they're thinking about like that 
Am I that transparent? That classic story. Uh, No, but I've done this a long time. But what most people think is, you know, a young girl, Mm -hmm. um, it's just it's a stereotype. And really, most of the people that we work with are 40 and over Uh, women who've lived, you know, their whole life taking care of everybody else, waiting for their maybe their perpetrator, if it was a family member to pass on or, Mm -hmm. you know, just uh, waiting for everyone else to be stable. And then they're finally in a place where they can deal. It's very interesting. Um, but also a lot of men. So this is not a women's issue. This is, this is a, a human issue because sexual trauma, uh, rape and, and abuse is, is not about the sex. It's about power. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it can affect anybody, any sexual orientation, any gender. And so we have lots and lots of survivors that we work with, men and women and um, lots of, of people from the LGBTQ plus community. Because, um, you know, it, it's it's vulnerable people. It's all people. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, a lot of people just think, oh, you know, you, you work with battered women or you work with, mm-hmm. with just young girls. But it's, it's really not I'm that so at all. I'm so glad you clarified that. Again, because without that knowledge, uh, people tend to be reluctant to say, well, what about this group? Or what about my friend who told me a little bit, and I think maybe this would apply. So right. how do you get the referrals? How do you accept people into whatever work you do with them? And I'm still a little fuzzy on that. Absolutely. Well, because I, <laughs> I haven't said anything, right? So um, so here's what we do at the Inner Truth Project. We work directly with people who've experienced any trauma one-on-one, giving them, um, providing them therapy with a licensed therapist. And then we also do peer support groups, which is really, I always say it's the secret sauce Mm -hmm. because you can work with a therapist um, all day long and get some amazing um, healing and tools. But when you work with someone who's actually walked in your, in your shoes, um, there's, there's a a solidarity there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the healing that takes place in our support groups is phenomenal. We do writing workshops, trauma sensitive yoga, art therapy, workshops on, on understanding finance and um, healthy eating and boundaries. So lots of different rounded approaches that fit a number of different people. Exactly. Okay, so I this is so fascinating. I could go the full 24 minutes without a break, but I don't think my sponsors would like that. So <laughs> we're gonna take a short break. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a moment or two. I'm Vicki Soule, CEO of Treasure Coast Community Health. Treasure Coast Community Health has been serving Indian River County for 25 years. How did we get here? It took a commitment to you to provide you with the most affordable, high-quality, integrated network of health care available anywhere. It took board-certified doctors and dentists and a dedicated staff to ensure that you receive the best possible care. It took more locations to meet the need. And now TCCH has seven locations, with the latest one conveniently located down the street from Cleveland Clinic Indian River Hospital. Our services are available to everyone, whether insured or not. And at TCCH, no one gets turned away due to an inability to pay. We rely on donations from generous benefactors to continue our much needed work. We accept Medicare, Medicaid, and almost all insurances. Call us at 772-257-8224 or visit us at tccinc.org. The 13th annual Felsmere Frog Lake Festival gets hopping January 21st through the 24th with midway rides and games galore, gator tail, and of course, frog legs. Entertainment, parking, and admission are all free. Unlimited rides for one low price and live entertainment all weekend long. Free shuttle services Saturday and Sunday. The Felsmere Frog Lake Festival is a mask-friendly and socially distanced event. For more information, visit froglakefestival.com or follow us on Facebook. Sponsored by I Think Financial. The Bottle Shop, liquor, wine from France, Italy, Spain, and California. They even do deliveries and parties. Are you planning an event? Bottle Shop provides liquor and wine on consignment. Pay for the booze you use. They deliver anywhere on the island. Hotel rooms, too. The Bottle Shop, next to the Boiler Bar, both on Ocean Drive in Vero Beach. The Bottle Shop, 772-231-0277. And welcome back to Community Conversations. 
This is Vicki Soule. We're having a very interesting discussion about something that uh, most people don't want to talk about, and that is recovery from sexual abuse, sexual trauma, um, other things that the Inner Truth Project, uh, led by um, the uh, great Mindy Fetterman, um, who is a truth seeker, um, because as she says, she gets right down into those conversations that most people are afraid to have or reluctant to have uh, for some reason or another to help those individuals that have been through a very bad experience. And thank you, Mindy, again for clarifying this is not just a woman's project. The Inner Truth Project is about seeking truth and healing for people regardless of their sexual orientation or gender. So um, there's, I'm sure you have endless business opportunities. I hate to sound that that cold about it, but I know there's a lot of people out there that unfortunately are still seeking um, appropriate therapy because as you pointed out earlier, um, there are a number of people that offer therapeutic services, but that doesn't mean that they're all comfortable talking and um, leading people on the path to healing in the same way. Right. And I don't, it's not cold. I mean, I tell people all the time, I, I have great job security, you know, <laughs> and, and, and it's unfortunate, you know, I would love to work at a mall and, 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 and get a discount on shoes and, you yeah, know, but that, all those that's not the reality. Things, yes. um, right. And, and we bring a lot of humor. I personally, that's just, that's how I roll. Uh, you know, it's, it's an intense topic. It is. And so we, we laugh a lot mm -hmm. and, um, you know, a lot of people are afraid to take the first step. To, to reach out to us because they feel like they're going to have to rehash all of their stuff. Right. It's going to be so depressing. And and I always say, you know, this is a celebration. What we do is a celebration because I try to remind people, you're here, mm -hmm. you've survived, and we're going to help you live the the best possible life that you that you choose to to live. Mm -hmm. And so it's it's not depressing. It's about recognizing how far you've come and it and it is a celebration and and finding gratitude so uh, you know we, we we make a lot of jokes and we laugh a lot well there's there's something going around on Facebook now um, that shows an old man with a little kid at his side and and the quote from T.S. Eliot um, and I'll paraphrase it is basically you can't change yesterday mark a line today and move forward and that's really what you're about is helping people move forward in a way that's comfortable and certainly with peer support um, again everyone's journey is different but it is a journey that other people have not necessarily taken right um, so there is some assistance there um, right. so you're using uh, licensed clinical social workers all of our uh, practitioners are, are licensed social workers uh, licensed okay. mental health practitioners we also use um, certified recovery peer specialists okay. because they have an ability to uh, connect with uh, the the survivors on a on a peer level, okay, and then um, you know our instructors for our adventure therapy, uh, equine therapy, um, uh, trauma sensitive yoga. Everybody is certified in. You have a lot of trauma. different programs. You started we, to tell us about do. that, and I kind of had do. to cut you short. So <laughs> let's restart that <laughs> part of the part of the discussion I again. Know, I get excited. Oh I get no, excited. it's wonderful. So. You know, again, I what I'm hearing is you have a number of different programs because we all have different personalities, things that click with us, things that are like, oh, I don't want to do that. Um, so tell us about those. Have we talked before? Because you're spot on. <laughs> no, like you, I've done this a while. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we we um, offer a whole um, a whole list of different opportunities because just as if there is no one type of survivor there's no type of of healing that's going to fit for each person okay and, and who am i to say that you need uh your faith or that you need um emdr or you need um you know cognitive behavioral therapy how do i know what's going to work for you mm -hmm. so the more that we can offer and say let's let's try everything mm -hmm. and and see what what works for you then um then i feel very comfortable saying you know you can you can trust our organization and then just kind of take it at your own pace there there's n healing is not linear and as long as we're available with all the different options, then I feel like, you know, we're 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 giving connection and we're mm -hmm. giving um, stability. And that's more important than the different types of uh, programs than we have, you know, just a constant in somebody's life to let them know they're not alone. 
So um, there's every week we're learning about a different modality of healing. So, you know, we just try to, if we have the appropriate funding, because we're a mm -hmm. 501c3, and that's really hard. It uh, is really hard. <laughs> I will be the first to admit that. Right. And, you know, our therapists don't work for free. Our instructors don't work for right. free. So provided that we have the funding, if someone, you know, a survivor, we're survivor-led. So let okay. me back up for a second. What that means is as many ideas as I have or our board has, it's really the survivors. So if they come to us and say, I heard a program out in California uh, mm -hmm. with sand, it's sand therapy. I say, okay, I don't know, let's, <laughs> let's look into it. Yeah. And then we'll see if we have the appropriate funding and okay. we'll make it happen. Because if you have been affected by sexual trauma, mm -hmm. your power has been taken away. So what better way to begin to heal but to use your voice, feel validated, know you've been heard and then see it in action and that's what we do so i'm a hundred percent committed to being a survivor-led organization finding the funding to make these different programs happen and then letting the people choose to see uh what their treatment plan is gonna gonna um, look like and take it from there so do some of your uh, program suggestions then are they allowed to help lead the development and the implementation of those? Or do you have some volunteers and other folks that also assist? Yes. So we have, uh, we work with, I, I, as I mentioned, women and men. We also work with teens. So we get funding from the Children's Services Council of St. Lucie County. Thank goodness. Right. Yes. They, they help us with our parents and our teen program. And we start at age uh, 14. Okay. We get a lot of referrals, even younger than that. But what we do is uh, we have a representatives council. And we meet uh, once a quarter, and okay. it's uh, representative from our teen group, our parents group, partners group, men and women. Ah. And they all come together and okay. they say, this is what we like. Mm -hmm. This is what we don't like. It's always too cold in the building. We don't have good <laughs> snacks, you know, whatever it is. Whatever it and is. And then they bring it back um, okay. to a representative of our board. And then we try to make those changes. So that's how we we ensure that mm -hmm. everybody's always being heard. And we try to develop our um, our planning and our mm -hmm. programming based on what what they mm -hmm. ask for. So I'm going to back up the train just a little bit to clarify the mention of the St. Lucie Children's Group um, would lead people to think of this as a uh, St. Lucie County thing. How wide is your spread Absolutely. of geography? And do you utilize a lot of Zoom? Uh, you know, transportation is a barrier for a lot of folks. So how do you reach out, um, whether you're in St. Lucie or externally, how far is your reach? Yeah, thank you for asking that. So our physical location, we have a, an amazing uh, facility. It's 2,900 square feet. It's beautiful. Okay. And so I hope all of your listeners uh, or, or viewers um, reach out to us so that okay. they can take a tour. Our facility is in St. Lucie. West, but we are um, an organization that helps survivors all over the Treasure Coast. So we have about 30% of our survivors from Indian River County. Um, we've got about 20 from um, Martin County. We have survivors from Okeechobee and St. Lucie. Okay. So we're all over. And then we have people that actually come from Palm Beach County and even north of Sebastian because there's really nothing like what we do. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, since COVID, we moved almost all of our support groups um virtually online okay. and that's been amazing because now we're able to access survivors who don't have transportation who are um you know dealing with health issues can't can't drive right. and we have people out of state and out of country now who have been wow. able to participate so we're almost to the end of our time frame i'd like you to be able to give out um, your contact information because not only do i think you'll be getting more phone calls from people who want to know specifically about your services for themselves or relatives or good friends but also because as you expand as a nonprofit, what i'm clearly hearing is you could use some more donor support even if it's a small amount. So give it to them. Absolutely. We're, we're, we desperately would love to find a partner or angel uh, a funder. And they can reach us at info at innertruthproject.org. And you can always call us 772-200-4599. And Hortensia 
will answer the phone and uh, we'll get connected right away. And we're very responsive and we would love to be able to support anybody who reaches out to us. So if that wasn't clear enough, Hortensia is bilingual. So again, um, your group takes some takes everyone. So we take everyone. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, Mindy. Thank you. Wish you and your group a lot of good, successful days. For those of you that stayed with us till the end, thank you very much, and we'll talk to you again next week. <laughs>